Record. <laughs> My sister and I, we wanted to be on the cover of this very popular magazine. We were told that we couldn't be on the cover of the magazine because we were black and we would not sell. How someone could demean your value because of the color of your skin. I will never forget that. I'm Tia Mori and today I am unfiltered from my home. How long does it take me to do my makeup? I'm a mom, right? I'm a working mom, so I like to do my makeup in about 20 to 25 minutes. Anytime past that, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I've been quarantined for a while now, but I will say this, when I do get out, which is the grocery store or an important doctor's appointment, I will, I think they say, I will beat my face to the gods. <laughs> Before I like to apply any kind of makeup, you know, I think it's really important to me to mention that skincare is essential, right? Yeah, I believe it's all about the inside and out when it comes to beautiful skin. And I actually have a supplement line called Answer, and it's all about skin, hair, and nails, so I like to take that. And another thing that I like to do is I love to moisturize my skin. It's all about the glow. <laughs> oh, I'm a nut. When you put me in front of a camera, I'm a nut. Okay, especially if I'm looking at myself. I can't be serious in front of a camera. I'm... <laughs> Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. And I like to go up like that. Because when you go down, it, see how it drags your face down? And it's all about mm. <laughs> When was the first time I recognized beauty? I would have to say looking at my mother. She is this strong, confident, beautiful black woman and she has beautiful dark skin and her skin is just so smooth. She's the epitome of beauty. My parents, my dad's white, my mom's black, and my parents, they actually met in high school. They ended up getting married, very young you guys, and both of them enlisted in the army. People in general who are in the army, they move around a lot. So that's exactly what happened with me. Moving around a lot, especially as a child, it was hard because I would kind of, you know, go to school, get new friends, and then I would have to leave and bounce. And then I would have to start that process all over again. I truly believe that that's why I'm a social butterfly today. And I actually have a butterfly tattoo. I've learned how to make friends, be social, because it was kind of like the only way to survive, you know, as a child. So I'm gonna take you guys down memory lane with some sister, sister fashion. I'm scared! Oh! <laughs> I'll tell you this, I know exactly what's going on in that picture. My sister and myself, we probably said, go home, Roger. Our outfits, in my opinion, I think it's still in style. I mean, what I love is we plaited it, if that's even a word. I think I would definitely rock the plaid tights again. I think that's cool, you know what I mean? Classic. Oh! <laughs> Terrible. That was just wrong, just all wrong. Number one, the clothes were just too baggy. Remember back in the day? Remember back then, like, it was all about the baggy clothes, you know? No, no. 
No. I mean, the hats were cute. The hats were cute. I actually have um, a hat like that still in my closet today. I'd wear the hat, but everything else, no. <gasps> oh my gosh, I love that photo! You know what I love about that photo? It's the memories that came with that photo. That was one of my biggest photo shoots that I had ever done in my entire life. And that photo was actually um, when Sister Sister was on ABC. A huge, huge moment. So I was just so excited. We got to try on clothes, people got to do our hair, our makeup. I love that photo. Actually, I forgot a, a tip, you guys. So I like to put a little bit of a highlighter, like right in between there, just to kind of highlight my eyebrows a little bit. Just to kind of give it like a little more definitions. Booyah! Okay, so after that, what I like to do is I like to start with my concealer. I think by me being a twin, I, I truly feel like you always know what's going on, you always know what's happening, whether you want to or not. You know, being a twin, you're kind of always linked together. I'll give you guys an example. So if I'm at a grocery store and it's just me, they'll be like, hi, T and Tamara. You're like, uh, it's only me. You know, sometimes it's really hard to individualize yourself as an individual person when you are twins, because people tend to always like group you together and people think that you like the same things, you do the same things. But my sister and I, you know, we're very different. We usually say we're like night and day. If I were really honest with you, in the beginning it was hard. And it was more about not allowing society to define who we were and are today and allowing us to evolve into the people that we really are. And once we were able to do that, um, I feel very blessed that people have been able to accept, you know, who we are as, as individuals. So since we're talking about foundation, I would say the foundation of my life is family. Family, 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 family. Whenever I like get into some sort of bind, meaning I'm kind of going through some sort of tribulation, I always look to my ancestors and then I look to my family, I look to my, my children, I look to my, my son, my daughter, I look to my husband. They, they keep me strong, they keep me standing up straight. Growing up in this industry and, you know, being a young black girl in the spotlight, I was insecure. I used to take diet pills. I would also feel insecure about my hair because being young and being in this, in this business, I never saw girls like me. I never saw girls that, you know, were embracing their curls or I never saw curly hair being portrayed as beautiful, let's say that. I love that now I'm seeing images that's really embracing natural, beautiful, curly hair and just beautiful black women in all shades, dark, light skin, brown. Um, representation is important and that really helped me, meaning me seeing those images is what helped me embrace my natural beauty. I'm on contouring, honey. When was there a time that I wish I would have spoken up? Wow, I don't know, I'm about to cry. Wow. Sorry. 
I don't want to ruin my makeup. <sighs> okay. So it was around Sister Sister Days and the show was extremely popular. We were beating, like in the ratings, friends around that time. So my sister and I, we wanted to be on the cover of this very popular magazine um, at the time, and it was a teenage magazine. And we were told that we couldn't be on the cover of the magazine because we were black and we would not sell. But here I am, you know, as an adult, and it's, and it's, and it's, sorry, wow. And it still affects me, you know, how someone could demean your value because of the color of your skin. And I will never forget that. I will never forget where I was. Um, and I wish I would have spoke up. I wish I, wish I would have said something then. I wish I would have you know, had the courage to, you know, speak out and say that, that that wasn't right. And that's why even to this day, I'm always telling my beautiful brown skinned girl. Hey girl, hey girl, hey girl, hey girl. That she is beautiful. I always tell Cairo. I always say, Cairo, you are so beautiful. You're smart. And the same thing even with my son. I tell him how handsome he is. He's smart because I know what it feels like for someone to, that you've looked up to, for someone to devalue your worth. And I don't want my children to ever, ever, ever feel that and not have the strength or the foundation to not believe it, to believe that they are worthy. And my makeup is done. <laughs> I feel most beautiful when I am surrounded by my children and my husband and just my family. And I'm just me. I'm just myself, meaning no makeup, my hair's not done. I'm just in comfortable clothes and I'm just me. Gray hairs and all. That is when I feel beautiful.